Hi guys, my name's Annie. Today we're gonna do a root chakra inspired flow. Um, one of my goals with this channel is to start with a series working through all of the seven chakras in the seven chakra system. A little bit about chakras before we get started. In Sanskrit, the word chakra translates to wheel. And so the chakras are different energetic centers, different wheels located along the base of the spine and all the way up to the crown of the head. The root chakra begins at the very base of the spine. It's associated with your legs, with your feet, your bones, your teeth, your large intestine. Um, it's associated with the color red, with the earth element, different properties, different energetic qualities, different themes in your life that the root chakra is associated with is groundedness, stability, security, safety, sustenance. We are also going to start with a mudra. So we're going to take a second here before we begin to warm up the hands. So I'll press my palms together really hard and create that um, like force there. And then I'll rub my palms together fast. So I'm creating friction and making a lot of heat, a lot of warmth there. And once I feel that it's gotten pretty warm, like a few more seconds here, I'll just kind of move on to grabbing the backs of my hands warming up the backs of my fingers, kind of squeezing each one. Give me a little squeezy squeeze there. <laughs> the, don't forget about your little thumbs. And then you can kind of just start to squeeze all around. Maybe get the wrists a little bit, palms of a hand, that spot by the thumb pad. A little bit of stretches. So here's a few finger stretches you can do. You can do that one and pull the thumb back. Be careful doing these. You know, you're not trying to force your thumb back. You're just trying to feel a little bit of a stretch, create a little bit of warmth in your fingers. So that feels pretty good for me. If you need a little more, pause the video. I hope you guys enjoy the flow today. Thank you for practicing with me, and I will see you once we get started. All right, we'll begin seated on our mat today. And just right at first, go ahead and seated in an easy pose, just to cross this. We'll separate our feet in a second. Just go ahead and close your eyes and ground down. Rub your hands along your thighs. Just kind of getting some grounding energy, warming up your legs, warming up the palms of your hands. And keep your eyes closed or just softly open. The eyelids hooded down and relaxed. Go ahead and separate your legs and rub down your shins and your calves. Rub the soles of your feet. You can even take opposite hands and rub the sole of the opposite foot. So right hand to left foot, left hand to right foot. Encouraging that balance between the right and left sides of our body. And slowly rub your hands back up your legs, switching back to their own leg. And maybe just squeezing along your calves and thighs a little bit. Giving your legs some love, maybe your hips. Eventually coming back to just a still seated position. Palms of the hands near your knees, fingertips draped over your knees. Go ahead and close your eyes now. And sit up tall. And as you inhale, sit up taller. With your exhale, bring your awareness down to your sit bones, to where they are on the mat. And feel the foundation that your seat is providing you, that your mat is providing, that the floor beneath you is providing. And the stability you're able to achieve on this foundation. Inhale, sit up taller again, bring the awareness up to the crown of your head. And as you exhale, bring your awareness back down to where your sit bones meet the mat. And then to the area in between your sit bones, to your pelvic floor. This is the area of your muladhara chakra, your root chakra. And this chakra is associated with foundations, grounding, support, safety, and security. 
which are all words we'll return to in our practice today. Your root chakra is associated with the earth element in the color red. And as you focus on this area, think about what those words mean to you. Groundedness, safety, security, stability. Take a few moments to run through each one in your mind. And then gather up those feelings, those feelings of safety and security. And inhale them all the way up throughout the rest of your body, bringing groundedness throughout the whole rest of your body, all the way up to the crown of your head. And as you exhale, bring your awareness all the way down, back to your root chakra, and then down through your legs to the soles of your feet. Imagine roots going from the soles of your feet deep into the earth keeping you connected and rooted there so that you can grow from solid foundation. On an inhale, scan your body from the feet up, bringing your breath and your awareness all the way back to the crown of the head. And as you exhale, scan back down again. We'll do a couple more rounds of this and I just invite you to, as you scan, notice anywhere where you feel a little stuck or you feel a little more tense than in the other places. And see if that's a place where you can soften or a place where you can pay more attention to, whether in practice or outside of your practice. So just notice what you feel as you bring your awareness up and down the body. So inhale back up to the crown of the head. And exhale back down to the soles of the feet. One more time. Inhale up. And exhale down. We'll inhale up one more time. And on the exhale, bring your awareness back down to your seat. Slowly blink and flutter your eyes open. Maybe rub your thighs one more time. And just take a second to look around you, notice your surroundings, notice where you are in space and time. And to really ground out into there. This is where I'm at right now. This is what I'm doing right now. And we're going to do a little mudra here right at the beginning of practice. So a mudra is a seal or a gesture. Today we're going to work with Gada Mudra. And Gata means club or mace. This mudra is all about stability, safety, security, um, and it's a mudra specifically used to stimulate the root chakra. So we're going to work with that one today, and we'll do a couple more at the end when we do a breathing exercise, and I'll explain those later. For Gata mudra, we're going to start with our palms facing up. Take your ring and pinky fingers and interlace them, then cross them at that second digit, so the second little bend. And then take your middle fingers and press them together and keep them pointed up. And we'll take our pointer and thumb and make circles, interlocking circles. So cross the pointers over each other, same pointer, finger, same thumb, um, same side hand, basically. Pointer, finger, and thumb crossing like that. And go ahead and lift it up. And we'll start with it down here near our root chakra area, all the way down in your lap. There we go. Just taking a few breaths here to notice how we feel. Is it subtle or intense? Whatever it is, just sit with it for a second. And then bring the mudra up. You can look at it in your hands. If at any time during any of the poses today you want to make this mudra again, go for it. Um, for now, we're going to unlock the mudra and uh, just begin with a little bit of a warm up. So go ahead and release your hands. Rub your thighs one more time. 
Sending that energy, that grounded energy we just built up in our hands back through our legs, maybe even up your belly and your arms, sending it through the rest of your body. Then we're going to take our right hand and put it outside of our right hip. And we're going to do a side stretch. So go ahead and bend down. You can come down to your right elbow if you'd like, but just make sure you're grounding down that left hip towards the mat. Gaze out underneath your left armpit. Inhale, come on up and exhale down to the other side. So whether you're on your hand or your elbow, keep your right hip grounding down towards the mat and stretch all along the right side body. Inhale, press back up. We're gonna do a cross-legged forward fold. So just crawl your hands forward. Sit your hips back. Keep pushing your hips back towards the mat and relax your neck. Push your thighs down towards the mat. Press your palms into the floor. And then slowly walk your hands back towards your legs and re reverse the cross. So whatever leg's in front, put it behind. And we'll do some seated twists. So go ahead and take your right hand behind you. You can come up on the fingertips or place the palm flat, whichever way offers you more length for you to twist from. Take the left hand outside of the right knee and inhale, lengthen up, exhale, twist back. And with each inhale, you're gonna lengthen a little more and with each exhale, you'll twist a little more. Inhale, come on back to center and switch to the other side. Left hand goes behind, right hand goes outside of left knee. Sit up tall, inhale, exhale, twist. Inhale, back to center. We'll go ahead and do one more seated forward fold. Cross leg seated. And relax your neck. Feel your chest melting down. Feel your hips melting back and down. And go ahead and walk your hands back towards your legs and move into a tabletop position. So we'll have wrists under elbows, or yeah, I guess wrists under elbows, but <laughs> wrists under shoulders, knees under hips, press the tops of your feet flat against the mat, shins press against the mat, palms of your hands press against the mat, hip points pulling up towards your low ribs. And keep your neck long. And from here, we're going to take a few cat cows. So drop your belly, pull your chest through your arms. Inhale, look up. Cow pose. As you exhale, press into the mat with your hands and the tops of your feet. Arch your back a lot. Gaze back at your navel. Cow. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale. From here, go ahead and take some free movements. So you can maybe circle your hips around. You can uh, flip your hands so your fingers are facing your knees, stretching your wrists, leaning back and stretching your wrists. You can keep doing regular cat cows. Just a few more breaths here. Kind of feeling into your body, getting connected there. And then coming back to a neutral tabletop, we're going to ground down through our left palm and inhale, reach your right hand up to the sky. As you exhale, slide it behind the left arm, right shoulder goes to the mat, right cheek to the mat, crawl the left fingertips forward, gaze under the left armpit.
Inhale, drag the left hand back, right hand moves back up into the sky. And exhale, bring it down, other side. Ground into your right hand. Inhale, left hand lifts. Exhale, thread it behind. Crawl the right hand forward, left cheek on the mat. Gazing out under the right armpit. Inhale, come on back to center. Left arm goes up and meets the right down on your mat. From here, we're going to move into puppy pose. So walk your hands forward. Keeping your hips high, send them back. And send your chest down. Forehead down to the mat. Press your palms into the mat. If you have your forehead on the mat and you want a little more of a shoulder stretch, go ahead and look forward, putting your chin on the mat. On an inhale, slide your hands back, tuck your toes, and push back into downward facing dog. Go ahead and check in with your stance here. Make sure your feet are about hip width distance. Hands are about shoulder width distance. And just pedal your feet a little bit here, walking your dog. And after a few rounds of that, go ahead and gently stomp your feet. Just connecting with the soles of the feet. Feel them press into the mat. If in your down dog, your heels are up and not touching all the way, then just stomp with your toes. And the ball of your foot there. You can bend your knees. Maybe kick your leg around a little, just connecting with these lower limbs. All right, go ahead and find some stillness. Look forward and take those same kinds of stomping steps up towards your hands. And we'll take our feet as wide as our mat and grab a somewhat lazy forward fold. So holding our elbows here and just swaying back and forth. Bend one knee and kind of feel the weight fluctuate between the soles of your feet. So as you go to one side, you're putting more weight on that sole and supporting you more. And then to the other the same when we come to the center, it's pretty equal. Go ahead and switch the grip. So grab opposite elbows from what you were grabbing. And just continue to hang, maybe swing back and forth rather than side to side. Maybe doing some figure eight type of deal. Again, just whatever feels good here. Maybe keep your knees bent. If you're still tight in the leg. Plant your palms. Still tilt your feet in about hips distance. It's going to be about two fists. You can put them there. And you're going to inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward. Bend your knees if you'd like here. Our legs aren't quite warm yet. Relax your neck. On an inhale, sweep your arms up overhead. Gaze up at your thumbs, then exhale, palms down by your side. Go ahead and take a playful hop in. We're going to have our big toes together and heels slightly apart, setting up for Tadasana, a foundational pose. Hug your shins in, ankles hug in, shins hug in, kneecaps lift, inner thighs pushing back, hip points pulling up towards your low ribs, and then your chest is going to lift while you keep the engagement in your core, chest lifts. So as your chest lifts, your butt doesn't go back. Your butt stays neutral, hip points stay lifting, chest up, roll your shoulders up, back and down, palms of the hands facing your thighs, gaze forward, back of the neck long, reaching up, crown of the head reaching up. On an inhale, take your arms up above you, 
Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Plant your palms, step back, right foot, left foot, high plank. Exhale, lower down, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, look forward, walk forward. Half lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, raise arms back up overhead, Urdhva Hastasana. And exhale, back to Tadasana. Surya Namaskar A. We'll move through two more rounds of those. Half breath per movement. So on an inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, halfway lift. Plant your palms. Left foot, right foot. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale. Downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. And we'll take three breaths here. Inhale, look forward. Step forward. Half lift, Adho Uttanasana. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale. Inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, back down by your side. One more round. Inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Plant your palms and you can step or hop back for Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing dog. Hold for three breaths here. Drive your heels down into the mat. Push your inner thighs back. Push your hips up, keeping your waist long, but pulling your shoulders away from your ears. Inhale, look forward. Step, hop, or jump forward. Halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms up overhead. And exhale, arms back down by your side. We're going to keep our feet in the same position, big toes together, heels slightly apart. Sit your hips down and check in with your knees and shins here. So go ahead and pull your shins and knees back. Make sure you can see your toes. Again, tuck your hip points up towards your ribs. Inhale, arms up overhead. Utkatasana, fierce pose. You can keep your arms here about shoulder distance or join your hands together. Sink your inner thighs towards the mat. Push down through all four corners of your feet, but keep your toes light. Back of the neck nice and long. And exhale, sweep your arms back behind you. Gaze down, lift your triceps. And as you inhale, bring your left knee up to your chest. Arms come up overhead. Flex the left foot. And find a single point to gaze at. Find some stability here. Feel your standing leg grounding you down to the earth. Feel that your lifted leg still has roots connected to the earth. And on an inhale, send that lifted leg back behind you, warrior two. Bend deep in your front knee. Open your arms up parallel to the sides of your mat. And make sure you have a heel to arch alignment between your front and back foot. You need to widen the stance a little, shimmy the feet a little. Take this first round to really check in there. Bend deep in your front knee. Gaze out over your front middle finger. Stretch the arms long, like there's someone pulling at each of your wrists in different directions. And 
On an inhale, reverse triangle, straighten the front leg. Right hand up to the sky, left hand back to the left leg. Heel to the left foot in a little to shorten your stance. Inhale, reach back one more time. Exhale, send both your hips back to the left and fold down over that front leg, triangle pose. And put your hand on the inside of your foot, the outside, grab your big toe, ankle, shin, wherever you feel good today. But check in with that shoulder and make sure it's opening up, not crunching in. So we're gonna open the shoulder up and then we'll extend our left hand up to the sky. And you can gaze down, out to the side or up towards your thumb. If you're gazing up towards your thumb, try to look at your left thumb with your right eye. Keep the back of your neck long. Look down, take a slight bend in that standing, in that front leg. And we're gonna pop up for half moon. Let me grab the block here. If you have a block and you would like to use it for half moon, go ahead and put it there. So from triangle, we'll bend in that front leg, walk our right fingertips out to the right corner of our mat, either on the floor or on a block, and pop up for half moon. You can do the block at different levels, whatever level you feel comfortable, or if you're on the floor. Standing leg, push down through all four corners of the foot, shin hugs in, Top leg out, or thigh reaches up towards the ceiling. Bottom shoulder keeps opening outwards and not crunching in, keeping the chest nice and open. Deep bend in that front knee. Exhale, sit it back for warrior two. <laughs> it's all right if you wobble, just come back to center. Find that stability and groundedness again. And inhale, come on up to star pose. And as you exhale, heels in, toes slightly out, bring it down for goddess. If you'd like to do our mudra again here, gata mudra, and feel free to hold that. You can put your hands at your knees, pray them together at your chest, let them hang, whatever feels best to you right now. Hold here for just a few more breaths. And on an inhale, sweep your arms up, straighten your legs, point the toes forward, and exhale, forward fold. Keep your spine long, crown of the head dangling down towards the earth. Legs are strong, kneecaps lifted. Inhale, halfway lift. And as you exhale, we're gonna lunge towards the left. So you can take a side lunge here, keeping both soles of the feet grounded on the ground, palms on the ground, palms at your heart. Or you can take flying monkey. You can pop up on the right heel, squat lower towards the left side. And again, pray your hands at your heart, keep them down on the ground. You can crawl the left hand in front of the left knee, shoot the right hand up in the sky. You can bind them behind your back if you would like. As you inhale, come up back through center, pivot to the left and sink into a runner's lunge on the left side. Plant your palms, back thigh pushes up, back heel pushes back. Walk your fingertips forward. Throw your right leg up in the air, standing L. Right foot flexed. 
Think of having an up dog back here. So you're on your fingertips and your chest is pulling through your arms just a little bit. And then exhale, top foot meets the bottom, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold down one more time. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way up overhead and back down by your side. All right, next side. So check in with your feet, big toes together, heels slightly apart. Sink low, Utkatasana. Keep your hip points pulled up till we do a little rib. Sink a little deeper. Exhale, sweep the arms back behind you. Bicep lifting up, legs strong, arms strong. Ground down to your left foot. Inhale, bring the right knee up to your chest, arms up overhead. Find the single point to gaze at. Find your groundedness, your stability, your center here. On an exhale, send the right leg back behind you, warrior two, left side. So again, check in. Heel to arch alignment, sink low, open your arms up. Gaze out over your left middle finger. Stretch your arms long. Reverse triangle, inhale, straighten the front leg, left arm goes up to the sky, heel toe the back foot in. And find length along both sides of your waist here. Exhale, shoot the hips towards the right, left arm comes down, trikonasana, triangle pose. Check in with that bottom shoulder. Make sure it's opening up. Inhale the right arm up to the sky. And go ahead and gaze down. Bend in that left knee. Grab your block if you're going to use it. And pop up half moon. Again, opening that shoulder up. Keeping the chest nice and open. Top outer thigh reaches towards the ceiling. Top foot is flexed. As you exhale, deep bend in that front knee. Sit back, warrior two. <laughs> and on an inhale, come on up for star pose. We'll exhale back down into goddess one more time. Feel free to do the same thing with your hands. Do something different. You can always do little stretches here, moving from side to side. You can always sway back and forth. I invite you for at least these last few breaths to just find stillness. So whatever position you're holding, get really still there. We're gonna hold our nidra. And on an inhale, sweep your arms up, straighten your legs, point your toes forward. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, lunge, side lunge, or flying monkey over to the right. Go ahead and take a second to set it up. Do the same thing you did on the other side. So 
So try to create that balance, maintain that balance between the two sides. There is normally one side that's tighter or looser or more flexible, less flexible than the other. So just kind of work with where each side of your body is at. Like today, this side of my body is a little tighter, but I'm still gonna try to get into as much of the same shape as I can that I did on the other side. Left toes pointing up towards the ceiling. If you're in flying monkey, if you're in side lunge, slowly the feet are down. Toes are pointing forward. On an inhale, move back through center and exhale. Runner's lunge back towards the front of your mat. Go ahead and crawl your fingertips forward. Pop up into a standing L. Top foot is flexed. Chest is pulling through your arms. Check in to make sure your hips are square to the mat. So if one's kind of popping up, just think of pulling the outer thigh or standing leg down. Pull the shin, or I'm sorry, the outer thigh of your upper leg down. Pull the shin of your standing leg in. And on an exhale, both feet meet in a forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold again. Inhale, sweep the arms up above you. And exhale, back down by your side. Tadasana, mountain pose. We're going to move through that same sequence. One breath, or one half breath per movement. So on an inhale, Utkatasana, sit low. Exhale, sweep your arms back. Inhale, left knee to chest, rise up. Exhale, warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Right side. Inhale, reverse triangle, heel toe of the back foot in. Exhale, trikonasana, triangle pose. Inhale, half moon. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, star. Exhale, goddess. Inhale, back up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, side lunge or flying monkey, skandasana. Inhale, back through center. Exhale, runner's lunge to the left. Inhale, standing out. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, raise your arms up overhead. Exhale, back down by your side. Next side, sit low. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, sweep the arms back. Inhale, right knee to the chest, arms up. Exhale, step it back. Virabhadrasana, two. Inhale, reverse triangle, heel toe. Exhale, triangle pose. Inhale, half moon. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, star. Exhale, goddess. Inhale, back up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, half lift. And exhale. Side lunge or flying monkey. Inhale, back through center and exhale, runner's lunge to the right, back at the front of your mat. Inhale, standing out. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, raise your arms up overhead and then exhale, back down by yourself. And we're going to move down onto our bellies for Shalabhasana, Lotus Pose. So inhale, lift your arms up overhead. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, half lift. Plant your palms. Step back to plank and lower all the way down. Send your arms back behind you, tops of the hands on the mat. Forehead on the mat. On an inhale, we're going to lift legs, arms, and head, activating the whole backside of our body. 
exhale, inhale, lift. Exhale, fall back down, left cheek to the mat, and relax for a few breaths. Inhale, back to center, forehead on the mat. Exhale. Inhale, lift it all up. Activating the whole back of your body. Triceps lifts. Chest lifts. Inner thighs lift. Exhale, fold back down. Gaze to the left. Plant your palms under your shoulders. Push your hips back for child's pose. You can take child's pose like this with your feet together, sweeping your arms back behind you. Or you can come into child's pose. Toes together, knees wide. Sit your heel, sit your hips back on your heels. And stretch your arms forward. Balasana. And from here, we'll move up to tabletop, tuck our toes, push back into downward dog, and walk your hands back towards your feet, and go ahead and rise up, I'm going to move into tree pose, so I'll come to the center of my mat, here, you can come to the center or stand, wherever you have landed, in tree pose, we have three different options, so we can keep our foot here, so on the ground, sole of the foot against the ankle, and the lower leg there. You can keep your foot here against your shin and your calf, or you can pull it all the way up towards your inner thigh. The only thing is don't put it here by your knee. We're gonna try to avoid that. So if it, you're up by your inner thigh and it starts to slide, just move it down here to protect our knee. So wherever you're hanging today, go ahead and stick your sole of your foot against there. Sole of the foot is against inner thigh. Push the sole of the foot against the inner thigh, the inner thigh back against the sole of the foot, and take whatever hand variation you like to do here. So you can go hands on hips, hands at heart, and take our mudra. We can go hands up in the air with branches, whatever you would like to do here. I'm gonna go ahead and do our mudra here on this side and make a little gata mudra branch. And again, just feel that rootedness and stability of your standing leg and know that your lifted leg is rooted as well. Although it is lifted, its roots remain connected to the earth. Bring your hands back down. Go ahead and just help your foot down. So guide it down and we'll go on to the next side. Again, try to do the same position that you did, even if one side is a little more stable feeling than the other. Try to just keep it balanced and even here. So we're going to go ahead and plant your sole of your foot wherever it's going to be planted today. Find that balance, find that single point to stare at and take your hand position, whether it be the same or different than the one you did before. And we're fair at the heart. You can grow your branches, you can be a cactus, whatever you feel like today. And then go ahead and help guide that foot down. We're going to move on back and crawl our hands out the plank, we're going to go through a vinyasa, so chaturanga, lower down, halfway, inhale, upward facing dog, 
exhale, downward facing dog. And from downward dog, we're going to lift our right leg up, lift from your right inner thigh, and then shoot it through for pigeon. So right knee comes outside of right wrist. Right knee is also outside of your right hip. This keeps the knee safe. Go ahead and check in with your back foot. Make sure it's parallel to the side of your mat. Top of the foot is pushing down. And your front foot, if your shin is parallel to the mat, flex your front foot. If your shin is not parallel to the mat, like me, go ahead and keep it relaxed. We're going to sink into our hips here. Sink forward into that left front hip and keep sitting the right hip back and down. Sit the right hip down, sink into the left hip, keeping the hips squared and then we'll slowly move forward. You can keep your arms extended out in front of you or you can make a little hand pillow under your forehead. And you can just bring your hands all the way to the mat. Inhale, go ahead and lift up, crawl your hands back, sit down on your right glute, swing your left leg around in front of you, Johnny Shear Shasana, head to knee pose. So the sole of the right foot, inside the left thigh. Go ahead and lift up, subtle little twist to point your torso a little more towards that extended leg, and crawl your hands forward, keeping the spine nice and long. And go as far as you can go today. So if you get all the way to the foot, lengthen one more time and pull yourself down. If you feel your back start to round and you would rather stay on your fingertips back here, that's fine. Wherever you're at today, go ahead and find your stillness there for the next few breaths. Inhale, sit up, come up, we'll do a wide leg forward fold. Just go ahead and open your legs up wide to whichever side of the mat you would like. And go ahead and sit up tall. And again, same thing here, crawl your fingertips forward, keeping your spine nice and long. Feet are flexed, thighs pushing down, palms pushing down, neck long, spine is long. And with inhales, you can find some length, some extension. And with exhales, you can fold in a little more. Go ahead and walk the hands back towards your inner thighs. And we'll move into pigeon on the next side. So if you'd like to move through a vinyasa and come back in from down dog, or if you'd like to shuffle in from right here, then just go ahead and plant your palm shoulder width apart, bring your left knee outside of left wrist, outside of left hip, right leg back long behind you, top of the foot presses down. Same thing with the front foot here. If your shin's parallel, flex it. If it's not parallel, keep it relaxed. We're going to sink our left hip down Sink our left glute down, and then front of the right hip sinks down, squaring the hips to the mat here. We're gonna crawl our fingertips forward, slowly extend our body over our left leg.
you need to lift up, walk your hand back, sit down in your left glute, swing your right leg in front, shiny Shirshasana, and the other side. So sit up tall, get that little micro twist of your torso, crawl your fingertips forward. Foot, extend, and fold in. Big Palatine blinks, exhale, fold deeper. Fingertips slowly up. And we'll take wide leg forward fold again, but this time we're going to do some side stretches. So go ahead and take your right hand, slide the back of your palm along your left inner thigh and sink down to your right elbow. And now left arm up and over. And this is always, if that's too much, you can always just come right here. Bringing your right elbow to your right thigh, staying right here. And the goal is to get a side stretch. So you're reaching for your right toes, but not at the compromise of your side stretch. So the goal here is to stretch along the left side body. And if you reach your right toes, you can go ahead and hang on, pull, and look out under your left armpit a little more. But if not, then you just hang that up here, reaching in that direction to get the stretch. Inhale, come on up. And next side, slide the back of your left palm along the right inner thigh. Inhale, right arm up. And exhale, fold towards the left leg. And again, if you reach your toes, give it a little pull and look out under the right armpit. Or just stay up here, reaching towards that left foot. Inhale, come on back up, and we're going to move into our bridge pose. So go ahead and just swing your feet back around to the front of your mat. Lie on your back, pull your heels back towards your sit bones. And for bridge, you can either hold on here at your ankles, or you can plant your palms flat. You can bind them together behind your back once we get up there. So go ahead and set yourself up. Press down into the soles of your feet. Press down into your hands. Press down into your shoulders. Press down the back of your head. And lift from your hips, squeezing your inner thighs together, keeping your knees safe. Lift your hips. Walk your feet back if you'd like. Grab your ankles. Find your hands. Take whatever position you're going to take here. And exhale, lower back down. We'll do one more bridge pose. Take a couple breaths in between. All right, press down your feet, press down through your hands, press down through your shoulders. Inhale, lift your hips, squeeze your inner thighs. Take your arm position, whether it be the same or different as last time. And exhale, lower back down, hug the knees into the chest, rock from side to side, massaging the low back a little bit. You can reach your arms inside of your legs, grab the outsides of your feet, happy baby. Pull your thighs down, keep your feet flexed. Not side to side a little. You can straighten one leg and straighten the other leg. Or just find stillness. Hug the knees back into the chest. Send the left leg out long. Hug the right knee in.
And then we will scoot the left hip in a little to keep the spine centered and twist over the left leg. Send your right arm out long. Gaze out towards the right. Inhale back to center and switch it out. Pull the left, scoot your hip back. Pull the left knee into your chest. X and the right leg long. Right hip in a little bit, and then twist over the right leg, left arm out long, gazing out towards the left. Keep pushing the left shoulder down towards the mat. Inhale, back to center, pull both knees into your chest, and then send them straight up above you, legs up the wall pose. Now we can either stay here in our leg up the wall pose or we can push up to shoulder stand. So here's going to be the different options. I'm going to go to shoulder stand and then from shoulder stand we'll go to plow. But if you're in legs up the wall, you'll go here. And then from and when, if you go to shoulder stand, we'll go to plow and then we'll go to Karna Pidasana, ear pressure pose. And if you are in legs up the wall, you, you'll be here. And when we go to ear pressure, you'll go here. Bada Supta Bada Konasana, reclined bound angle pose. So back up, legs up the wall. If you're coming into shoulder stand, so Lumbo Sarvangasana, you're going to press your palms down, press your shoulders down, lift your hips, shimmy your elbows in, support your low back with your hands, and then send your legs up. Go ahead and shim your elbows in a little more if you need. And press down through both of your shoulders, that whole line of your upper back between your shoulders. It's pressing down to the mat like the edge of a box. Squeeze your legs. The more you squeeze, the lighter you feel. Squeeze your core. Push the inner thighs towards the wall behind you. or in front of you, whichever, <laughs> the, basically the wall where your elbows are pointing towards. And exhale, halasana, plow pose. If you're in feet up the wall, go ahead and take your legs wide. And in plow, you can keep supporting your low back or you can bind your hands and pull them down towards the mat. Plow pose, go ahead and pull your feet forward, Karna Pidasana, ear pressure. If you are in legs up the wall, Supta Vada Konasana, reclined bound angle. And then we'll all roll on out. Everybody straighten your legs out in front of you. Take your hands down by your hips, pop up on your elbows, pop up on your head, fish pose. Feet together, pointed or flexed. Press down through your elbows. Push your chest towards the wall your face is facing. And we'll take three lion's breath, so inhale. On the exhale, stick out your tongue and breathe out hard. <sighs> Inhale. <sighs> Inhale. <sighs> Go ahead and lie back flat. Put your knees into your chest one more time. Rock side to side. And then rock up and back. And take a few rocks here. So we finally shoot up to a nice seated position. And from here, we're going to do Nadi Shodhana. 
channel cleansing breath, alternate nostril breath. You can take your legs in whatever position feels good. So Sukhasana, like we were when we started, easy pose. Ardha Padmasana, half lotus, or Padmasana, full lotus. Whichever way feels good in your body today. Again, feeling grounded, not like too much of a strain, especially now we're going to breathe and then move into Shavasana. So it should be a relaxing posture. And we're going to make two different mudras with our hands. So with our left hand, go ahead and take left pointer finger and left thumb and press them together. The other three fingers are gonna bind up and you'll place the back of the left hand on your left knee. This is dhyana mudra. Again, mudra meaning seal, and yana, wisdom. So this is a wisdom seal, a seal of wisdom. So sealing in any wisdom that you obtain from your practice today, anything you can take into the rest of your day. And then with our right hand, we're going to make Vishnu mudra. So go ahead and take the pointer and middle finger of your right hand and tuck them into the palm. Clamp it off with your thumb pad. Pinky and ring fingers come together. They don't have to be straight. It's okay if they're a little bent. We're gonna use them to hold each side of our nostrils. Bring your Vishnu Mudra up to your nose. Take a deep inhale and exhale. And now close off your right nostril with your thumb and inhale through your left nostril. Close off your left nostril. Hold both nostrils closed for a second and then exhale right. Inhale right. Close them both. Release left, exhale left. That's one round, we're gonna do five total, so four more. Inhale left. Close it, exhale right. Inhale right. Close it, exhale left. Inhale left. Close it, exhale right. Inhale right. Close it, exhale left. Take two more rounds just on your own here. So go ahead, inhale. And complete the next two rounds on your own. If you're done, go ahead and release your hands, unwind your feet, maybe take some more gentle rubs along your thighs. We're going to move into Shavasana next. So if you want to continue doing that breathing exercise, you can always pause the video and keep doing a few more rounds on your own. Um, otherwise, we'll move into Shavasana. I'm going to dim my lights. I invite you to turn off or dim your lights as well and just kind of get in a more comfortable position. Take a second to do that, and we'll all meet in Shavasana. Alright, so go ahead and lie back if you haven't already. And we'll start here. You'll scan the body from the feet up. So start at your toes. Relax your toes. The tips of your toes around each digit. The balls of your feet. The sole of your foot. That soft part. 
Keep heel sinking down into the mat heavy. Your ankles and shins rolling out to the side. Knees relaxed. Thigh bones melting down into the mat. Especially your thighs melting down into the bones. Your hips melting down. Your belly sinking back towards your spine. Arms are heavy, fingertips heavy. Throat heavy, sinking down. Your chin is relaxed, your jaw bones relaxed. Your cheeks, your nose, that little space under your eyes, relaxed. And your eyeballs relaxed. Forehead, eyebrows, whole top of the head, heavy and relaxed. And deepen your breath here. begin to deepen your breath to come back and scan back down the body starting at the crown of the head and just checking in with how each part of the body feels starting to breathe through the neck chest arms belly hips knees Wiggle your toes, rock your legs side to side, bring your head back and forth, supporting this. And go ahead and slowly draw your knees in towards your chest. And roll to whichever side feels appropriate to you. So your right side is your sun side, your masculine side, left side is your moon side, feminine side. And typically that sun side is associated with more energizing qualities and the moon side is associated with more calming qualities. So if that helps in your side rolling decision or if you've already intuitively rolled to one side, just check in with what those words mean to you, sun, moon, energizing, calming, and check in again with anything else you might need, anything else you can do for yourself as you move out into the rest of your day. And press down through the palm of your hands. Slowly bring yourself back up to seated. 
and kind of cross your legs in whatever way you'd like. And go ahead and feel your hands together at your heart. Thank you for practicing with me today. Namaste.